Yesterday we saw the release of the Kebos Lowlands, an extension to the Great Kurand located just north of the chambers of Zarek. The update brought a new achievement diary, a new Slayer Master and new Slayer Monsters, the new Farming Guild and Aerial Fishing. Two new quests were also released for the Lovakenge and the Arceus House. This video will give a brief overview of all of the new updates, the most notable rewards, but I mostly wanted to compare the new gear and changes to the previous best. The new achievement diary covers the entire region of the Great Kurend and the Kibos Lowlands. Completing each tier rewards you with Rada's Blessing, an item worn in the ammunition slot. Most notably, the Elite Blessing offers a plus two prayer bonus, which is higher than any ammunition slot item in the game. Additionally, completing the Medium Diary gives a 5% chance to mine two dense essence blocks instead of one, slightly speeding up your Zaya runecrafting. With the Hard Diary, you can add the Shazian Helm 5 effect into the Slayer Helmet, so this allows you to pair the Slayer Helmet with the full Shazian armor set while it's still receiving the entire set effect. In addition to the plus two prayer bonus with the Elite Diary, you get an increase to 20 Slayer points per task from Konar, who I'll talk about soon, as well as protection in the new Slayer dungeon without having to wear special boots. To claim your reward upon completing, you need to speak to Elise, who is found in the courtyard area of the Kurand Castle, and along with the Blessing, you'll get the regular XP Lamp rewards of up to 50,000 as well. All the way in the northwestern corner of the Great Kurand, a sulfur volcano has spawned, a new area known as Mount Kurulam. Here lies a new Slayer Dungeon along with Konar, a new level 75 combat Slayer Master. She assigns tasks restricted to a specific area, so instead of just getting black demons, you'd get black demons restricted to the catacombs of Kurend, for example. Her tasks are similar to Duradel's, some in smaller quantities and some in bigger quantities. She rewards 18 Slayer points per task, which is surprisingly higher than Duradel, who gives 15, but lower than the Wilderness Master, Crystilia, who gives 25 per task. On top of that, any monster killed on a Konar task has a chance of rolling the new global loot table, and the chance of hitting the drop table is scaled dependent on the combat level of the monster that you're fighting. The drop table includes the brand new one-handed Dragon Haster, which has a very unique special attack that uses all of the remaining special attack energy that you have. So that can be from 5% to 100%, and the damage and accuracy of that attack scales to how much energy is used. It has very similar stats to the Dragon Spear, except the Hasta is one-handed, allowing you to use the Dragon Defender. On release, the drop table boasted huge drops, including 2,500 Sardoman Brews and other drops up to and over 2 mil in value. A day after the release, a nerf took place, lowering the overall value of drops by around 30% and reducing the high value drops. Also included in the cold fix is the new Dusk Mystic Robes with a Mount Karulum color scheme. You roll a chance at the Mystic in the same drop table as the Dragon Hasta. Almost all of the drops on the drop table are resource drops, making them amazing for Iron Man. Located just north of Konar is an elevator, and going down is a new single combat area known as the Karulam Slayer Dungeon. It contains generic Slayer monsters like Fire Giants, Greater Demons, and Hellhounds, but it also has five brand new monsters. The lowest level monster is Sulfur Lizards, which can be killed on a Desert Lizard task with the task name renamed to just Lizards. Worms or Wirums, which require 62 Slayer to kill, now drop the Dragon Sword and the Dragon Harpoon. Those were both removed off the Raids 1 drop table, and they are also the lowest Slayer requirement monster that drops Dragon Knives and Dragon Throne Axes, both of which have also been removed from the drop table at Raids 1. Drakes, which require 84 Slayer, have a unique drop of their claws and their teeth. You can add the claws to the Boots of Stone, and that turns them into the Boots of Brimstone. And you can turn Holy Sandals into Devout Boots with the teeth. The Boots of Brimstone require 70 defense, magic, and range to wear. They're decent hybrid or tribrid boots. They also give resistance to the hot ground inside of the Slayer Dungeon, making them the best in slot for many of the monsters inside. The Devout Boots have the new highest prayer bonus in the boot slot, giving a plus five prayer bonus with a 60 prayer requirement. Holy Sandals, the previous best, gave only plus three. 
Next is Hydras, unlocked at level 95 Slayer. There is as well a task only boss version, namely the Alchemical Hydra. The boss drops a range of highly valuable ammunition and resource drops, and also has three unique drops. The first unique is the Hydra's Claw, which can be attached to the Zamorakian Hasta to make a Dragon Hunter's Lance, the new best in slot melee weapon when fighting dragons. Being a Dragon Hunter weapon, it gives a 20% accuracy and damage boost on any dragon. The second unique is Hydra Leather, which can be taken to the Lithgren Vault after Dragon Slayer 2 and turned into the Ferocious Gloves. These gloves require 80 attack and defense to wear, and are now the best in slot gloves for melee. Their downside though, is they have a negative attack bonus in ranged and magic, and no defensive bonuses either. Their strength bonus, however, is two points higher than Barrow's gloves, and the attack bonuses for Stab, Slash, and Crush are all four higher. The third unique from the Alchemical Hydra is the pet known as the Ickle Hydra. It has a drop rate of 1 in 3000 and can be changed into all four of the different forms of the Alchemical Hydra. On top of those three unique drops, both regular Hydras and the boss version have four more drops, which are unique to both of them. Firstly is the Hydra Tail, which is a tradable drop that can be added to the Dragon Bone Necklace and a Bone Crusher at the same time to make the Bone Crusher Necklace, which removes the need to carry the Bone Crusher in your inventory. The other three drops are untradable drops, the Hydra's Fang, Eye, and the Heart of the Hydra. Each of these needs to be combined to create the tradable Brimstone Ring. The ring has the combined bonuses of all of the unimbued Fremenic and Wilderness rings combined. You can't imbue this ring though, and it does not give a prayer bonus. An additional effect of wearing the ring is there's a 1 in 4 chance to ignore 10% of the target's total magic defense. A bit of an interesting one. All of these monsters that I've spoken about can be killed off task, except for the Alchemical Hydra. Newly built and maintained by the Hosidia's house is the Farming Guild. Using the skills necklace, you can teleport right outside, and in order to enter the guild, you need at least 60% Hosidia's house favor. Within, there are three tiers, each with different farming requirements. In the first tier at 45 farming, you gain access to an additional cactus patch, a bush patch, allotment, and a flower patch. Also inside is the Guildmaster, who gives out farming contracts, which can be completed within the farming guild, and you'll be rewarded with seed packs, which contain seeds for the unique patches within the guild. With level 64 farming, you can now plant potato cacti at any cactus patch, and you can get cacti seeds from nests or farming contracts, or you can buy them off the Grand Exchange. Similarly, you can now obtain snape grass seeds as well to grow snape grass, and that brought something very notable for ultimate Iron Men. You can now note your snape grass at a tool leprechaun, making prayer potions so much easier to make. At level 65 farming, you can access tier two, in here, there's a new tree patch, herb patch, and the brand new Hespori patch and the anima patch. Hespori seeds are obtained randomly when harvesting other plants or by getting the seed packs from contracts. Upon fully growing, the Hespori patch will turn into a solo demi-boss, and when you kill it, you receive farming XP, a variety of seeds, and a chance at the bottomless compost bucket which holds up to 10,000 compost. The seeds you get can also include the new white lily and anima seeds. White lily seeds can be planted in any flower patch across RuneScape and will protect any type of allotment around it. The anima seeds come in three different types and can be planted in tier two of the farming guild in the new anima patch. As soon as you plant the seed in this patch, you'll get a worldwide benefit for your farming patches for the next 84 hours. Addis seeds create a plant which increases the yield of all the patches in the game. Excellent for herb runs. Iazor seeds lower the chance of disease for any crop in the outer world. And lastly, the Kronos seeds, they give a small chance for any patch to skip a growth state, basically increase the overall speed of plants and trees. Lastly in the farming guild is tier three, which requires 85 farming to enter. It contains a fruit tree patch, a spirit tree patch, a new redwood patch, and a new celestrus patch. The celestrus patch, once fully grown, will give celestrus wood, which can then be turned into battle staves with a knife and 40 fletching. There are now redwood seeds in old school, which I'm guessing will cost more than magic seeds and will give more experience when fully grown. They have a huge 106 hour growth time, which is over four days. 
With level 81 farming, you can now grow dragon fruit trees in fruit tree patches, giving the most farming XP out of any fruit tree. You also get the new dragon fruit, which can be made into dragon fruit pies, and they give a plus four boost in fletching. So that's all of the new farming content, moving into aerial fishing. Right in the center of Lake Molk is a small island home to a fisherman known as Alri the Angler. To access the area, you can board any of the three boats to Molk Island, and these boats can also be used for slightly faster transportation across Zaya and Kebos. To start fishing at Lake Molk, you need at least 43 fishing and 35 hunter. You can right click on Alri to get a bird quickly, but you will need to have your glove slot, weapon, and shield slot fully empty. The pools move around every 7 to 12 seconds, and each time you send your bird, you're guaranteed a catch. To get started, you should first grab the knife in the small house, then grab one king worm from the pile in the center, and on each catch, you can use the knife on the fish you get to get stackable fish chunks. Those can be used instead of the king worms as a reward for the bird. With each catch, you'll also have a 1% chance of getting a mulk pearl. You can then trade with our reader angler to exchange them for equipable fishing rods and the fish sack. At this stage, there is no confirmed information about the fish sack. There are rumors of it being cosmetic, but I went through Reddit and found a really old post that talks about introducing the equipable rods and the sack as a suggestion, and it was suggested to hold 108 raw fish that can only be taken out at a bank. In the next few days, someone will unlock it, and I'm actually gonna go for one on my Iron Man, but as soon as we find out what exactly it does, I'll pin a comment. You also have a chance of getting the golden tench while fishing. It's a purely cosmetic minnow held in the weapon slot. The XP rates listed under the news post say at level 99 fishing and 99 hunter, you get approximately 60,000 fishing XP, 80,000 hunter XP, and 15,000 cooking XP per hour. Converting that into EHP or efficient hours played, it totals to be 0.89 hours at level 99, making it by no means a new meta, but perhaps the fishing sack and wearable rods will come in handy. So those are the major updates and everything I wanted to talk about today. What was your favorite update that came with the Kebos Lowlands? Mine was definitely the new Slayer Master and the Slayer Monsters. There is a lot of money to be made out there. Anyways, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.